Stu Gatz here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love a good gummy. Whether I'm on the golf course or winding down after a long day of carrying the show on my back, all I need is one good gummy to help me totally relax. And now, thanks to my good friends at CBDMD, getting Delta 9 THC gummy shipped directly to your door is not only possible, it's easy and affordable. How about that? Every CBDMD Delta 9 gummy is packed with 10 milligrams of THC per gummy. And let me tell you, buddy. They work. CBDMD also has Delta 9 microdose capsules that feature one milligram of THC, so it's easy to enjoy them whenever, wherever. And listen, I know it's easy to get confused with all the different deltas out there, but Delta 9 THC is the same good old fashioned THC we've all known and loved for years. To learn more about Delta 9 and everything else CBDMD has to offer, just head to cbdmd.com slash Dan. Once again, that's cbdmd.com slash Dan for information, education, and the best damn gummies you've ever had. Must be 21 years or older to purchase Delta 9. Do any of you have anything on the women's soccer game from the weekend that we did not discuss yesterday? Yeah, I watched it in entirety. Seems like Greg. Greg, you watched it. I did. Fantastic. Yep. Make sure to speak. Make sure. You, yeah, you're talking to the mic. Hello. How about that? It's just a thing you have to remind him. Oh, the mic should come to me, not vice versa. Let's go ahead and start right there. Greg Cody of the Miami Herald is in with us on Tuesdays, as he usually is, and he is now in the physically breaking portion of the proceedings. His hand is wrapped in gauze and tape and uh really it goes up to half almost to his elbow well it's it's poorly taped if we're being honest you're coming in aggressive on your injured father very early we've had some complaints recently that you and i are too mean to your father on tuesdays uh why what happened here greg are you at the age now where you can't brush against a, a cabinet without bleeding (laughs) <laughs> his hands have taken a step back in the last few months. Like, Dad, you have old hands now. It's a thing yeah. that's kind of... Uh, unfortunately, I have old forearms. Yeah. Like, it, my dad, really... too. Yeah. If my dog jumps on, on my dad, he's, like, gushing blood for hours. Yeah. Did you lotion a lot, like, in the la- like in your 40s? I, I, no, no. I've just now begun to lotion. Ooh. I lotion... You know, these are the... the, the they get all the UV rays, the forearms. There, there was a comedian, I don't know who it was, whether it was Jeff Ross or someone else, who talked about aging and how easily when you age, you bruise. And the conversation that he had with an old person, uh, an old bruised person who explained that what had happened to her was the wind. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> the wind. It's coming for all of us, man. Well, <laughs> you you have dyed your mustache. Yes, sir. I Whoa. have. I have. In an aggressive move in my war against aging, I have dyed my mustache. Do I like the results? No, not particularly. I thought that was only for the soups. Yeah, well, it was a soups exclusive. You're going to find out when I dye my mustache, you'll be the first to know for $2.99 a month. Unbelievable. No. I, have, uh, I saw some grays peeking in there. Uh-huh. And like Mark Jackson said, you tell your body not today. I'm telling you right now, 2022 is not only the year that the internet started working for me, it is the year that I started reversing the aging process by not taking any self-responsibility. I am not changing anything about myself whatsoever. It's just going to be dye and camouflage right. and an assortment Back, of things. Guess what? I'm doubling down. I, I'm I'm doing worse things to my body no, at no. 36. Oh, no. Yes. Yes. That's what we're doing now. And science better catch up. In the meantime, I'll hold things together through duct tape and just for men. Are you <laughs> considering Botox? And- am I considering Botox? Brother, Botox is absolutely a certainty. <laughs> Filler is what I'm considering. <laughs> Hair transplants necessary uh, well, off in the future? Your boy rallied. Your boy rallied yeah. after a very low point. The, the keeps worked. The uh, uh, Pellicreccio. Uh, no, it's a Crecci Peggio. I'm sorry, from Brazil. <laughs> that actually really worked for me. All natural alternatives. Am I happy with the Entradas? No. Am I taking the L? Not just yet. If we see some recession, your boy's hopping on the first bird to Turkey. <laughs> Istanbul, here I come. Greg Cody going to Turkey for his forearm. What happened? Because you have it wrapped 
almost halfway up the forearm and above the forearm, there's a lot of scarring. Yeah. I had a kitchen mishap on Sunday. Uh, it was pretty bad, actually. And and this is uh, cosmetic. It, this is not something I need as much as it's something that hides what would be pretty ugly bandaging. Mm. Um, basically, uh, I was cooking uh, a rump roast, which uh, is a beautiful cut of meat. You love butt. Well, this is not a Boston butt. No, this is a rump. Yeah, the the Boston. Yeah. The Boston. You also eat rump, though. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I eat rump. The, I'm sorry. I thought that this had something to do with the shoulder, and that the shoulder had something to do with the butt. Well, that's interesting. You should you say like that. You like eating rump? I do. That's I not love, for everybody. No, no. I, I like rump. More butt yeah, than too. rump. It it has to be cooked perfectly. The Boston butt is a cut of meat that's on the shoulder of the pig, not the butt. But the rump roast on the cow is the actual asshole. Is it's not the asshole. No, that's pepperoni. <laughs> No, the but but the rump roast is the closest thing to the tail. You it's think on I'm the kidding? look it up. It's on the rear of the cow. Anyway, long yeah. story short, shut up. I had you, a big. You didn't, you didn't know that about pepperoni? <laughs> no, pepperoni's the asshole. I thought of those cow. were nipples. Stop it. No, no. no I'm not having that. The cow has an udder. I Can love you imagine pepperoni. the uttered nipples on top of a pizza? You'd know. Pepperoni is not the asshole. Yes, I'm it is. Googling I took it a Miami Dade college. Oh, that class. can't be true. Pepperoni is the worst thing. I love pepperoni. Just repurposed cow asshole. No, that's not. Wow. That can't be factually <laughs> okay. correct. All right, no. we're looking at pepperoni and butthole pizza. That uh, can't be right. Anyway, continue. Okay, anyway, it's a six and a half pound rump roast, which is pretty big. Uh, I'm giving it, uh, prior to slow cooking it in the oven, I'm giving it a nice sear. So it's got that nice brown, that little crust before it goes in the oven. In the process of searing it in, in a, a thin layer of hot oil, I mistakenly drop the six and a half pound hunk of meat. Oil splashes up on me. Really bad. I dropped the tongs. I exclaimed. My wife thought I'd had a heart attack. Curse word. It might have been a curse word. Might have been the F word. Searing. Did you hear the sizzling on your skin? <laughs> I didn't, but it immediately bubbled and blistered. And you know, it's re hot oil is re a really ugly thing to look at. Hence the bandage. But uh, but I'm fine. And and the rump actually turned out pretty good. It was it was. A little on the medium rare side. I probably should have left it in the oven a, an extra 10 minutes, but still, Greg, it was good. Did you consider wearing long sleeves today? You know, I didn't. You should do that because right now you're taking an optics L in the war against aging. Right. If you just wore long sleeves, nobody would well, know. It, well, that's not true because he didn't shave today. And when he doesn't, uh, when he yeah. when he doesn't shave, he needs a lot of hair <laughs> I dye. Do. Yes. I need what you got. Yeah, I want what he winning. has. Salt's winning. Yeah, we cannot let this happen. No, no, this is a, this is bad. this is pure laziness. Mike, here. is this your first uh, this your first effort in the dye I'll category? Never tell. Well, but you just you. Just... It's my fifth. You never noticed, uh, fifth, which is I, great for me. Well, how did you feel about, you said this you didn't like it. This is the most like aggressive it. one. My wife told me I looked like a professional wrestler <laughs> last night. But, I know but it was Mike, in the dark, so but, I knew it was bad. I, I think if you didn't draw attention to it, we wouldn't have noticed. No, That's see, true. this is what you do. You neuter it on the front end. I am telling you, yeah. the audience, that I will not lose this war against Father Time. I will make aggressive maneuver after aggressive maneuver. I will look like Siegfried and Roy by 2025. I don't give a damn. You're going to watch me beat this thing. Pepperoni, the search for pepperoni and what I believe is a blatant falsehood. I don't want to say what I found on the internet. Involving pepperoni? It, it, Urban Dictionary says that like if you have a butt with a bunch of pimples on it, that's pepperoni. I'm okay. telling you, I took a health class at MDC, a very respectable <laughs> you institution. You can't go to the definition of pepperoni at Urban Dictionary. Well, I mean, yeah, seriously. So you think the actual definition of pepperoni is asshole? He's making. He's saying, look it up. He's throwing. <laughs> Am I telling you? I'm assuming this is like an Urban Dictionary no, thing you're referring to. No, I took to. a health class. He's like, pepperoni is the worst thing that that you could eat because it's made from the worst parts. I'm not finding. I'm that. not going to tell you they're going to go out of the way specifically. Specifically to slice the asshole because at that point pepperoni is a commodity. Roy's been on it's a, a, in and around the asshole. Roy's been on a pepperoni deep dive. Are you finding anything that confirms what Mike's saying? No. Okay. Have you any, wait, wait. Have you found anything that debunks what I'm saying? <laughs> no. Okay. The burden of proof is on you, not on me. No. That is so unfair. I'm seeing I'm it's, trying. it's a sausage made from Berkshire pork shoulder and flavored with fennel pollen shoulder. rather than the usual fennel seed, no. paprika, and cayenne. Wait no. a minute. No. Also, by the way, what about pepperoni, the not an Italian creation. It's an Italian-American creation, mm -hmm. a la chicken parmesan. Oh, yeah. Yep. In Italy, you don't see pepperoni pizza. Yep. In America, they don't want you to know what pepperoni is made out of. No one's actually asked the question, hey, where does this meat come from? It's the asshole.
Is it the asshole of a cow or a pig? Depends on no, what part of the country you're No, that's not what at. we're finding Maybe on the both. internet. And at Levitard Show, please put it on the poll. Did you know that pepperoni was American and not Italian? Look at all you guys towing, uh, towing the company line over here for uh, big pepperoni. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> there is asshole in that pepperoni. Okay, you keep saying that, and I'd like you to stop saying that because we haven't found anywhere I'm that sorry, it is factual. I'm sorry, you're a big fan of Marlins 5? Uh huh. Oh, Every yeah. time Inter Miami draw or win, you're out there with the Papa code. I get you. Ah, I get you. Code. No judgment. Just know you're eating an asshole. I believe that we did not spend enough time last week talking about the proper two pizzas to buy if you're only buying two pizzas for a group. I know you talked about it some, Stugatz. Uh, we were all amazed. We're always awed when Stugatz goes into his own pocket and uh, gives. And you got spot pizza last week. He brought yeah. he, and, oh, yeah, and we were right talking here. about what is the proper. What are the you proper, guys are lying. Stu got it. No, he did. He did. He paid for all of it. Yes. Didn't expense it. No. People. Uh, well, we don't know yet about yeah. that. We don't know what will come in from Lake Placid. The work week he just had this week and the one hour he did from a Pilates room in Lake Placid. Uh, so it might get expensed. But what is the proper order of two pizzas, Greg, if you are ordering for a room of people and not asking anybody what they want? Uh, you have to go a plain cheese and you have to go pepperoni. That's obvious. That's what I just said. No, okay. I'm, yes, I mean, no, 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 no. I said I'm, I'm saying to Dan, like, I feel like that's a consensus answer. Right. Yeah. And uh, that is just no wonder the conversation didn't go anywhere. If everyone just agreed, if for the first time ever in the history of discourse, uh, people just agreed. Yeah, those are the two that you have to buy no matter what. No well, dissent. It's when there's an anarchy. And some people start going for spicy pepperoni oh, on, and Stop. sweet Stop. pepperoni. That was delicious. Don't if do you that. say meat lovers, it's like, no, too much. Too much. Chris, this was spicy pepperoni with a little drizzle of hot honey on top. It was I mean, delicious. that's little ricotta honey. cheese on that top. Oh, nice. my God. Oh, it was delicious. I'm not going to be hot mad. Honey's a rage now, now, yeah. Honey is yeah. so good. I, I, the only time I do eat pepperoni is with hot honey. Mm -hmm. Man, that's the best. Hot uh -huh. honey. Yeah. Wait, you've see, never had? Mike's hot honey is great. No, oh, God, no. Not a paid endorsement. Not a pizza ingredient. So, so you don't eat pepperoni in other contexts because no. because you think it's made oh, I from. Do. I took a health class at MDC. What you telling me? My my professor at the esteemed illustrious Miami Dade College <laughs> is lying to me. I've got a, a question for Greg Cody uh, that I don't know the answer to, but when you said, "God, no, I haven't had hot honey," I want an honest answer to the question I'm about to ask. When is the last time you tried anything new? Anything new. Just when is the last time you chose to learn, you chose change, you chose anything that you just decided for the sake of I'm not formed and I'm not intellectually yeah. lazy, I will always be curious. The last time you decided to uh, okay. try something. Yeah, in, in, in the spirit of consumables, uh, I was in my, my local market. I saw a bag, a bag of snacks that really appealed to me. I bought it. I'd never had it. It was uh, sriracha spiced uh, chickpeas, but they were baked chickpeas. They were like crunchy, um, sublime, just the best <laughs> ever. And I'd never had that. It was a new experience. And now it's like I, I can't get enough. Greg Cody on behalf of learning. Thank Last you. time I tried something new is I applied a raw potato to my face and it really brightened my skin. I'm taking the holistic approach, too. No stone left unturned. I wasn't asking you. I've grown a, a great deal weary of uh, of the amount of offerings. Like you haven't rubbed a raw potato on your face. <laughs> Here's it doesn't work with Papa Rellenos, though, by the way, so you may want to show that. What about cooked potato? <laughs> yeah, right. Try that one. Here's an experiment I want everybody to try. Uh, you know, you taste through the sense of smell. If you put a blindfold on and you pinch your nose so that you absolutely cannot smell anything. You cannot tell that unless you're guessing because it's 50 50, you cannot taste the difference between a raw <laughs> potato and an apple. You're you're lying right now. Let's no, you're right. telling me. Not. Let's right. do it. I'll bite into that thing and be like, "That's clearly a potato." No, not you, not wait. if you're blindfolded with no sense of smell. Can you rub an apple on your face? Just just checking. Absolutely. No yeah. Don't turn. Sure. Do you it all try. the time. 
Stu Gatz here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love a good gummy. Whether I'm on the golf course or winding down after a long day of carrying the show on my back, all I need is one good gummy to help me totally relax. And now, thanks to my good friends at CBDMD, getting Delta 9 THC gummy shipped directly to your door is not only possible, it's easy and affordable. How about that? Every CBDMD Delta 9 gummy is packed with 10 milligrams of THC per gummy. And let me tell you, buddy, they work. CBDMD also has Delta 9 microdose capsules that feature 1 milligram of THC. So it's easy to enjoy them whenever, wherever. And listen, I know it's easy to get confused with all the different Deltas out there. But Delta 9 THC is the same good old fashioned THC we've all known and loved for years. To learn more about Delta 9 and everything else CBDMD has to offer, just head to cbdmd.com slash Dan. Once again, that's cbdmd.com slash Dan for information, education, and the best damn gummies you've ever had. Must be 21 years or older to purchase Delta 9. Don Lebatard. Earlier in the show, the question was asked, what would Stu got to do with one invisible day. Stugatz. One day where he could be invisible. We decided that during banking hours, he would choose a weekday. He would rob all the banks in the universe from eight to five. And then at night, he would alter sporting event results by right. being an invisible man in games he had bet on. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz. We're presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code DAN for a special offer when you sign up. That's code DAN, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. One of the things that I wanted to discuss with you guys, because Greg Cody wrote a column about it this morning, and I have my remorses about some things that happened yesterday, chief among them because we were live, that we were giving opinions that were either incomplete or obsolete the moment that the report from the arbitrator came out on the Deshaun Watson case. And so I I regret that during the doing of a live show, uh, there was not time because it came out after the show to go over or to wait to have an opinion until the information from somebody who was paid to be a a neutral party to navigate a conflict, I regret. I made a mistake in not waiting that out before offering an opinion. And I fell on some of my formed opinions because, A, I'm still learning as some of this stuff happens. And I'll tell you about that in a second. But also uh, because... What we are seeing with this case is so unprecedented from an athlete, all of it, the guaranteed money, the conversation around it in an era of punishing athletes, I should have waited to form the hardened opinion, but the instantaneous, emotional, fast reaction put me in a position where basically I'm checkmated on a losing argument because at the end of this transaction, I now want to give Goodell a power I've been wanting to take away from him for, for since he's had it. Right. And really is at the source of this conflict because if he could get along with his partners, the players union and hadn't again and again lost their trust, he would not now be in the position where he's fighting them. He's winning according to the arbitrator on every single point. Sexual assault was committed. Yes. According to the NFL, the NFL proved its case to an independent arbiter. And really what happened yesterday is the penalty is light. It's twofold. There's time served, right? Because whether you believe it was a suspension full paid, he did miss a season of his prime. That is a punishment. Yeah, but it's but a not punish- because of that. No, it's a, you have to also apply the context that he was trying to force his way out of Houston before all of that happened. Right. He sat out last season. He didn't miss it as any kind of punishment for all these allegations. Well, but it was counted as time served by everybody. And whatever it is that you have to say, I'd love to make millions not working and everything else. Uh, it still is a punishment to not be able to play and to have your name spe- smeared. Uh, not punishment enough. And then yesterday comes down and six games felt appalling. It, yep. it, it felt... No matter what your tribe is on this, and people line up, black, woman, athlete, is it my team? I'm tired of black people being tried 
in the press, people take their sides. The reason that I wish that I had more information yesterday is because it seems like what happened is that this woman ruled against Goodell's ability to make up the rules as he goes along on what these punishments are. That she agreed that the NFL proved its case. I was not aware until yesterday, an off-air conversation with Jessica, I was not aware I'd always associated in my mind, and because I come from privilege too, that violence is physical, that it's physical violence, that that's how I define it. And the reasons that things were made in, in, in nuance and context between Trevor Bauer's situation and Deshaun Watson is that Deshaun Watson was not viewed as a physical threat, but she even ruled that he was a danger to others. She ruled that he stained the NFL shield by using his status as an NFL quarterback to lure women into what was a violent situation, whether you define it as physical violence or not. There was a phrase, nonviolent sexual assault, that felt oxymoronic to me. I thought if it's sexual assault, it's almost going to always be violent. Like yeah. that's, I thought assault and nonviolent, those two things can't be in a phrase together. And I did not find, like Mina Kime, she thought the ruling was incoherent and confusing. To me, it was not incoherent and confusing. She sided with the NFL on everything and then said, based on precedent, this is not how you punish. You don't punish this way. You cannot set a new set of rules. They said, but it's unprecedented. The crime's unprecedented. The number of people, unprecedented. It doesn't compare to anything else. We need an unprecedented penalty. And... Her response was, no, you don't get to do that when you're in with a league partner on something like this, where the players have a power that you, the commissioner, are no longer trusted with. And now you're trying to do the same thing that you've always done to punish extremely. And she wouldn't allow it, even as she sided with him. I, I made a point in the column that I, that I want to reiterate, because part of this is that there was precedent for a harsher punishment. In 2017, Ezekiel Elliott uh, was suspended the same six games. Okay, he had been accused of domestic abuse. That case, like this one, was not criminally prosecuted because the the uh, state attorney's office at the time said there was conflicting evidence. In in Deshaun Watson's case, there was not conflicting evidence. There were two dozen women saying the same thing. But not the arbiter didn't have access to all of those women. And again, the the reason she said this is an un she defined violence as non violence. Yeah. She was saying the CDC as is non aggressive yeah, non physical violence. Which I'm with Mina on that one. It it sounds oxymoronic. I enjoyed yes. our discourse yesterday. I actually thought while well, many people were whiffing, we did nail the, the important part, which is, no, she said he did this. Yes. He did this. He did this. And we'll get to what the Browns said afterwards, because I'm very curious to see how they pivot. And you've already seen one asinine statement. I can't from the believe Haslam. they use the word triggered in their statement. They use the word that triggered and the fact that Deshaun Watson has displayed public remorse since when? Zero. Zero. Yeah, and the remorse. arbiter said that, too. Yeah. And that's part of part of my problem with this whole thing. But is, uh, he, basically, he's calling two dozen women. Uh, a liar, and he continues to do so. And to me, the the important distinction in this is you can say Deshaun Watson got off easily, and he did, but do not say that he was exonerated. Okay. He Let, was found guilty. Let's stay here for a while, because throughout this process, the Browns maintained they did their own investigation, and they thought that Deshaun Watson would come out clean. They believed in Deshaun. They believed that he was doing the work, even though he admitted that he had no work to do because he did nothing wrong. You now have this investigation, and the result is the NFL met the burden of proof that the five cases they took into account, Deshaun Watson sexually assaulted them. You have now learned through an investigation, through a ruling from an independent arbiter, that you have a serial sexual assaulter in your locker room that has shown zero remorse. Now what? Oh, he's, he's still on your roster. We, we, we stand by him. He's, he's done all the right things. F*** you. That's what I say. Because you had a historic amount of allegations against this guy. You said you did your due diligence. Now you found out that he lied to your face? Okay? What like now you want to keep him in your in your huddle? Now you're that bullshit contract that you gave him where you limited his financial liability. I am so pissed off at the Cleveland Browns. 
The fact that they're standing by, Kevin Stefanski said he stands by the ruling of the judge. Okay, then you stand by the ruling that says the quarterback that is leading your team sexually assaulted five women. Five. The five that they heard. How does this make sense to anybody? This is insane. One of the things that bubbled forth yesterday and is bubbling forth now, right, is we are attacking blame on all sides for systemic failures. Go right to the top of Texas, which has brutally, brutally standards, high standards of proof when it comes to convicting or indicting on this. Like, compared to the country, it's unusually high. So what isn't an exoneration can be waved around as something that feels like an exoneration. As people say, this is not a criminal. He hasn't even been indicted on two counts. You've already punished, or he hasn't been indicted twice. And they do view it as a bit of an exoneration or innocent until proven guilty. Then the next step on that, because I want to talk how this would be playing out right now if this was the Dolphins, Greg, because you, uh, the Dolphins, by their own incompetence, merely avoided having this in their huddle. But if the problem is so systemic that Texas isn't good at handling it, the law isn't good at handling it, the NFL got involved with this way in over its head and is trying to do better work than the law as a conservative organization run by old billionaires trying to at least look like they're being aggressive with the penalty and not being allowed to because of the systemic failure of when they got involved in this business, their partners, the players, don't trust them to do this on the up and up, Tom Brady will not give them the phone. The arbiter is saying, my credibility comes from the credibility of NFL investigators. What I am viewing as credible evidence that proves the NFL's case is these investigators that I believe to be credible, even though those investigations have been flawed before, but she is taking the word of the NFL incentivized here to punish deeply that he is guilty of all of this. And she is citing this because this to me was the sentence that, that was the decision. It wasn't about any of this other noise. It was about this sentence. I am bound by fair and consistent disciplinary determination. It's as, it's as simple to her as what are the precedents here? This is the stiffest penalty I've ever given for a crime that she's saying she's defining as nonviolent. She's defining it as nonviolent. That's abhorrent. I don't think any of the victims would agree that it's nonviolent. And, and lifelong bruises sometimes are invisible, but they're there. And I, I just think it's, it's abhor abhorrent the way this ended on so many levels. The, the two sides, the NFLPA slash Watson and the NFL tried to compromise this. They tried for an agreement before the penalty phase. The NFL wanted at least uh, 12 games and an $8 million fine. Uh, Watson's side wanted a minimum, a maximum of six to eight games. So the, the uh, disciplinary officer gave the low end of what the NFL PA would have agreed to without a fine for a $230 million guaranteed contract. You can't find this guy. And there's no precedent for this because all these other incidents are individual incidents of domestic abuse and such. This is a serial uh, sexual abuser, 25 cases. And the fact that 24 of the 25 have now been settled, that's also not an exoneration. Settling a case uh, does not mean uh, he isn't guilty. I do think you mentioned a sentence. I think it was worth noting uh, the first paragraph of the conclusion of the judge's report where she writes, the NFL may be a forward facing organization, but it is not necessarily a forward looking one. Just as the NFL responded to violent conduct after a public outcry. So it seems the NFL is responding to yet another public outcry about Mr. Watson's conduct. At least in the former situation, the policy was changed and applied proactively here. The NFL is attempting to impose a more dramatic shift in its culture without the benefit of fair notice to and consistency of consequence for those in the NFL subject to the policy, meaning that the NFL has never been forward thinking about any of this. They always respond to, oh, Ray Rice happens. We have to change the violent sexual assault policy. Now this happens. So now they're trying to, on the fly, change the nonviolent, as it has been defined by the judge, sexual violence or, or sexual assault policy. And so 
the failure in leadership you talked about yesterday is true. This has been a failure of leadership to see at any point what could be happening down in the future. And they were not proactive enough to set a policy to where they could punish Deshaun Watson more. This is a failure of policymaking more than it is about proving their case. They proved their case, as as we've discussed. It's been proven. It's not just, they just that. Couldn't it's, it's, it is, it is like this. After all of those pages, not her 16 pages, but the 215 pages submitted by the investigators, what yesterday's ruling was, was, yes, NFL, you are right about count one, you are right about count two, you are right about count three. This was sexual assault. Assault. Also, you cannot punish that way because you've never done it before. You can't make up the rules on your league partners. It was, it's where this, the reason we got to arbitration is because the union for years has been fighting the power of Goodell to do this. And they just got slapped by a judge saying you can't punish that way. Not when you have partners that are your players and you cannot, you cannot be an authoritarian. You don't get to make all the rules, which puts me in the position inconsistent with all my others over the years of, and now what do you do? Goodell, well, you appeal it, and then you hear it yourself, because there is another step to this. He could just rule it, yes. which is which runs counter to everything I've wanted here, right. and I just happen to agree that he should just rule it in this one instance. I will give <laughs> you the power. I will trust you only here. I think you're afforded that hypocrisy after processing it. Yeah, it runs against I would argue that it is well within his power, because he has that lever that he can pull. That was also collectively bargained, that he can appeal it. They did give themselves that failsafe. And I think this time, in the wake of an unprecedented amount of allegations, one that the independent arbiter ruled was unprecedented and conceded that fact, that you drop the hammer with your appeal. You you can say that, though, and I can hear the people who want a dissenting opinion in this room saying that you cannot go through all of these steps that you went through and then at the end you're right it, it's counterintuitive leadership because he would be leading and doing the difficult thing to continue to fight this continue to keep it in the news stream nobody believes that's going to happen right don't most no. people believe that this is the end of it it's dicey I, I do think it's incumbent upon those in the media like mina like this show to keep pressing the cast and making sure that they get this one right. What kind of workplace is this? Imagine any workplace in this country. There is an investigation where one of the employees was alleged to have committed five. Let's let's give them five. Five incidents, five allegations of sexual assault. The investigation ruled that that employee did indeed commit sexual assault. Where in America does that employee get to keep his job, number one? And number two, get to trot out onto a field to cheers. And guaranteed giant money. But yep. what do you do with the counter, Greg Cody, before we get to how it is that the Dolphins ended up in this, where you're going through the steps and Deshaun Watson twice has not been indicted. Deshaun Watson did sit out all of last season. Right. Deshaun Watson is not being cost a lot of money, but is now sitting out six more games of a season. We are punishing him. What you're hearing now is an objection. That's not a strong enough punishment for what Mike's saying. It's right. a sexual, it's sexual assault after sexual assault. That's not usually allowed to work. But when the people in the audience who say, no, that's enough. That's enough on Deshaun Watson. He hasn't been found guilty of anything. The arbiter has, but in a court of law, a black man in Texas was not indicted twice. Right. Two grand juries said no. What do you do with all of that when the counter is there has been punishment here and there hasn't been proven in a law, in a, in a courtroom, right. that he is guilty? Okay. That's to come because there is one civil suit against them. There will be a trial, unless this one is settled as well, and there's no indication it will be. So there will be a day in court when he has to testify under oath and his accuser has to testify. That's coming. Probably, uh, I don't know when, but it's coming. Uh, you know. That's not really an answer to my question, though. Like, it's coming is not an answer to my question. Uh, can I take a stab at it? We have enough evidence of to course. suggest that he did this. Yes. And and when citing, you're right to cite the, the, the criminal um, charges that were not brought forth. They also didn't listen to all the allegations. We're, we're 
we're seeing a very small sample and we're hearing evidence on a small sample and we have leaks trickling out on since settled allegations within their judgment they said deshaun watson can only get massage therapy through team employees from here on out they are protecting women through contractual after, language. after the reporting was that NDAs were already being sent out with the Texans, and they had to settle a bunch of cases yeah, because bunch. of that. More than th- more than that, thirty through real you know. sport through real sports interviews, through leaked testimony, through in NFL investigations, through grand jury uh, possible indictments. We have enough to know that Deshaun Watson was a monster during this period, and I am fully on board with Roger Goodell giving off the optics that he'd be abusing the power to absolutely drop the hammer. I'm not saying banish him from the league. We can have that conversation. Henry Ruggs, we all know, gone. As soon as he does that, gone. I think there's a place for, if you have 25 allegations of sexual assault and you're able to to prove a good percentage of them, that's all she wrote, too. We can have that discussion, but I'm not going to argue that. I- Fine, but drop the hammer on him for this here. You cannot let this guy get away with this. It's very important to, to note, again, that Deshaun Watson was not suspended last season. He missed last season of his own volition because he was he had a dispute with the club. He sat out last season. It was he mutually was not be- suspended. To, to, to frame it correctly, it was mutually beneficial. It was great for the Texans to have that problem not be a Greg, problem. Greg, he would have liked to have played. Like, he wasn't going to sit out the season. Well, he was asking for a trade. That's why I, he sat I, out I, the I, season. I, well, no, but... No, there were extenuating circumstances. The NFL got very lucky. Like, you can't frame this as just Deshaun's choice. It served everybody to have him not play a year in his prime. That wouldn't have been his optimal choice. Here, here's a timeline. It started leaking out that Deshaun Watson wanted out of Tex- uh, of Houston, Texas. And then all these teams were calling on Deshaun Watson. And during the pursuit of Deshaun Watson, we were doing the rumor mill shows. What do you give up for Deshaun Watson? These allegations started trickling in. And then all of a sudden, the leverage that Deshaun Watson had seemingly went out the window. And then it was assumed, okay, is he going to get suspended? Will he play out the string now because he doesn't actually have the power to force his way to another team right now? The assumption was that if the NFL didn't suspend him, he would play out the string. The NFL and the Houston Texans and Deshaun Watson's camp probably came to an agreement that said, you know what? You can show up to practice maybe occasionally, maybe use a facility, but as far as game day, you are an optics problem, and we are not trotting you out there because it's mutually beneficial for us to protect our trade asset because the Texans got a haul for Deshaun Watson. And if they trot him out there, a player that has had injuries in his past, they run that risk. I also think, I want to mention that there has to be an admission here by Deshaun Watson of some kind. If I'm running the Cleveland Browns right now, uh, I'm the owner of the Browns. I have Deshaun Watson, my general manager, the head coach in a room, and I'm like, we have to put this behind us. And the the best way to do that, the only way we're going to even come close to closure here is for Deshaun to say something that isn't, I have no regrets. Because you cannot keep calling 25 women liars when the NFL has just said, you're guilty. There was evidence. That's why you were suspended. Oh, but I understand how he would arrive at a place at this point if he's in front of an arbiter not showing remorse and showing no one remorse. And if whatever he's doing, feeling like a victim, I understand why it is that he would object to your idea of he's got to go out there and fake contrition. He's got to go out there, be contrite for others. I don't think he's ever over this. If he doesn't show some sort of remorse yeah, fake, and some fake admission, it. fake it. But like the team is already faking it for him. They just straight up lied in their statement. They said that he's shown remorse. He, he has hasn't. never done that. He has never done that. He was asked, "Are you going to seek treatment for what?" I've never. I didn't do anything wrong. But what does that soothe? What does that? Play, please explain to me what you guys believe gets healed. By and and look, I would like him to believe it and say it. Feel it in your heart and and admit that you learned something or that you you didn't whatever. Just they, they, they lied to us throughout this entire process. They the Browns and Deshaun Watson did, and their statement right now was bullshit. And if they're going to keep maintaining that, they need to be called out on it. Lean into it. Lean into it. Yeah, yeah. We knew that this was happening, and we'll, we'll have faith that he's a changed man after he went through this, and he won't do it again. But yes. We have come to grips with the fact that we gave up massive draft capital for a serial 
sexual assaulter. America loves contrition, right? If there's any of it from Deshaun Watson, maybe it makes 25 women feel a little bit better. Oh, Greg. Maybe I, it man. makes Browns fans able to cheer for him with a little bit Greg, cleaner I conscience. Don't, I, don't, I don't, man, I, maybe I'm being an idiot about this, but I believe that that people have made up their minds here, and no matter what the redemption story is, him going out and saying a few words just to placate you so he could be sufficiently broken, I'm not sure it actually buys him very much. I don't think he's placating me. Yeah. I think he's I think he's making 25 women feel a little well, bit it's better. Not the, no, he's not going to make the women feel better. Oh, no. But I do, get, I do get Dan's cynicism here, but I do think that there's merit to what Greg is saying. There are several Browns fans out there that just want something to rationalize still rooting for that orange helmet. Just give me right. something. Yes. Make me feel a little bit better about this. And public contrition, you will have Browns fans, many who are at training camp asking for autographs that have already made that, that rationalization. You will have some that be like that will be like, okay, well, he's sorry. And everybody deserves a second chance and, and, we'll and move forward. And I would argue that these women accusers We'll feel a little bit of vindication because right now they've been Greg, called liars yes, uh, for two years. Um, it may be there, maybe there, but what we're talking about here, no one in this room is qualified to talk about whether after being sexually assaulted, um, a few words at a microphone from a quarterback who hasn't been contrite before uh, would would help soothe at all. I think when the Browns are sending out a statement that tr has the word trigger in it, they are triggering. I think that there are a lot of things around here that hurt uh, and regurgitate this. And one of them is that Deshaun Watson is going to be playing next year. It looks unless Goodell steps in with something that I haven't seen reported. We'll talk to uh, later in the show. If you're tired of this, Jamel Hill and Mike Florio are going to be on to talk about it later in the show as well. Uh, unless Goodell does something I'm not seeing reported that he's considering doing. Uh, Deshaun Watson will win and will be on a field running into the gladiator spectacle with those words or without those words. And he will be celebrated again on Sundays in a way that will hurt again and again because the system failed. It fell on the victims. And now future victims are not incentivized in any way to have it be easier to come forward because the entire system caved in on their heads like they did. They did not win here. They don't even get a dollop of contrition. Uh, as the NFL says, yes, a sexual assaulter will play quarterback for it. The discussion changed yesterday. People that were giving Deshaun the benefit of the doubt or defending, or at least giving the optics that they were defending Deshaun Watson, said, innocent until proven guilty. These are just allegations. They could be lying. Now you have the result of the investigation. He did it. Now what? You're okay with that? Because you kept holding on the line that maybe these women were lying. Maybe it was all circumstantial. Maybe it was just a mix-up. He did it. The Browns have shown that they're okay with it so far by their ridiculous statements. Deshaun Watson hasn't shown an ounce of contrition. Don't let anyone frame that narrative. And the defenders, they're out there cheering at team headquarters. It's a sickening display. It's sickening. Well, that's, that's the part that is the most grim, is that there are Browns fans and perhaps other people that are rebelling against the Me Too movement or whatever their politics are that viewed a six-game suspension as a victory, right? That, hey, you only got six games. Couldn't have been that bad. And then you read the report, and the report says, this guy's guilty of everything. And so it's merely in the very administrative gray area of what the NFL's personal conduct policy is that this can even be viewed as a win. But it really is gross to watch people flock to him for autographs, people cheer this as a win, and eventually, week seven on Monday Night Football, yeah. we'll be cheering him as he runs out onto the field. It's just the height of gross. And I just agree with my dad that there is value in him saying, look, I put people, I made mistakes, I made women feel uncomfortable, I'm going to get help. Like, maybe if they're just words, that's better than what he's doing of, I didn't do anything wrong. It's just, it's yes. bullshit, and it's... There has to be some level of, yes, I, at the very least, I made fe people feel incredibly uncomfortable and I need to evaluate myself and get help. The reason I buck on this portion of it is because I uh, was surprised a few years ago to hear Jerry Jones say out loud um, that the public wants the misbehaving black athlete 
to be chastised, to be beaten down, to be humbled. And whoever is cheering for Deshaun Watson these days, whoever those people are, um, I, I believe that if they're still trotting around innocent until proven guilty or he suffered enough or whatever it is that happened in the O.J. Simpson trial where two Americas were looking at something and they were uh, they were bringing in past grievances that had very little to do with what they were witnessing on television. Uh, Deshaun Watson does have his supporters here. Well, if it makes you feel better, I don't just want the black quarterback punished. I, I want the white owners taken to task that shielded their daughter that 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 held up their daughter as the reason the guy that went to a, an unhoused person to find out who he should draft and that person gave him the advice of Johnny Manziel he turned to his daughter here and the daughter said no we're we're, we're good okay let's ask the daughter you just found out he sexually assaulted five five women you you still cool okay we're still gonna go with that Kevin Stefanski Andrew Barry you you argued for the merits of your investigation I want the white head coach taken to task. I want the black GM taken to task. None of those questions are coming, though, correct? No, they, they've put out their statement. Stefanski spoke to the media. He said that, uh, you know, Deshaun's trying to be his best self, and we stand by the, the ruling of... Uh, of uh, Tried out the bullshit that he yeah. hadn't read the report. Yeah. Th now, you, now you've had time to process it. Hammer these folks. Hammer these folks. Maybe that's the only... That's the only punishment. That's the only that, that's the only thing that they have to go through next. They're not going to get grilled like that. That's they not. Should. But do you think that I I have not seen a press conference that has a lot of that? It's in a, it. it's a bullshit public display of uh, of vengeance. But I at least want it. I want people taken to task as directly. Hey, you found out he did this. Do you remember how casually is it Biscotti, the Ravens owner, when he was on stage after Ray Rice, how he was handling it with grace and charm, right? He was not pressured. He did not feel like the questions were going to be so hard that this was going to be combative. I think he had his legs crossed. I was surprised by how relaxed he was. That This is not the America that that America was. I don't think you'll ever see the press conference that asks sports figures that allows owners to get, man, they can't get, they have all the hard time getting Daniel Snyder in front of Congress. Like right. the idea that these people would sit there for the barrage of questions that would be hostile. The, and has, the Haslam zoomed in to the Deshaun Watson press conference. They didn't, they weren't there taking questions, excuse me. And they put it on their daughter. They put it on their daughter. I want to ask the questions with the same ferocity, even more so now that we have the result that says he did this. Now you have to answer for it. Before we were throwing out hypotheticals and we were honoring the process. Now you know the sickening truth that he assaulted sexually five women. The cases that were brought forth to the arbiter. Knowing that there are mountains more that didn't even make it that far. How do you reconcile that? What do you do now? Do you lie to me and tell me he's been remorseful? It seems like that's been the play so far, and I really hope they reevaluate that. Because if they came out and were transparent, at least I would give them a little bit. This is transactional. This is not the moralities business. We saw an asset out there. We knew he had this in his past, and we're going to make sure that it never happens again. And we'll move forward together. Everybody deserves a second chance. If you want to lean into that, fine. But do not bullshit me. Do not continue to do that. They would not lean into that. You don't want the truth like that. You can't handle the truth <laughs> like that. Honestly, you but don't. But that is the truth. We're uh, all talking about it openly. No, we but, all know no, it to be so. No, but yesterday I asked you guys about what's the point of making money? Is it just to have more money? What I was talking to you about leadership and ownership and how these things change as you're talking about systemic failure. State of Texas law, NFL not equipped. They're trying, not equipped. You're talking about structural stuff falling around these people how do they extract themselves with this situation here with the truth when you're telling me it's all a lie because i was asking you guys yesterday you're okay with it always being about commerce and business because it's never been more obvious that the, the bodies don't matter. Not women's bodies, not men's bodies. It do, they don't matter. It's not the bodies. It's keep the machine moving so that it makes money. How I'm not even sure how bad this actually is for the NFL in real terms. Publicity in an offseason that's terrible publicity, but has us talking about football that will be part of the pregame hype to Game 7 Monday Night Football. Deshaun Watson makes his return. Like, this is all part of the grist in the mill that Jerry Jones calls the circus and enjoys uh, the elements of this that are, that are dangerous and American. Uh, the truth? 
You think you're going to get the truth in a pre- that any executive would stand up there and say to you, you know what? I need a quarterback for 10 years. I couldn't get this quarterback. Do you know how bad the Browns had been for how long? They just buried our previous regime that we believed in for the first time in 20 years. This guy represents hope. Sorry, some of these dudes are criminals. Some of these dudes do really yeah. bad things, and they're in the huddle anyway. Like, you want the truth? How great would that be? breath of fresh air. Oh, wow. It honestly would be, because we, we all know it to be <laughs> so. I, I did air. His first home game is on Monday Night Football where it'll be a disgusting display of him being showered with cheers. He plays on the road, so the NFL and its broadcast partners get to soft launch this. He'll be at the Ravens, his first game back, in the middle of a slate of a very busy afternoon. I am telling you, once Bill's Rams kicks off on Thursday night, we are all going to fall for it. Wow, We're all going to feel like football is in the air. We're all going to be super excited. We're going to give our Super Bowl picks. We're going to be jacked up about our fantasy teams, and this will go away for a little bit. And maybe it'll enter the conversation again for a brief period before he plays the Ravens. Gone again. And if you didn't know better, you'd think Sue Robinson was looking at the NFL schedule when she decided on only a six-game penalty. Imagine that. We didn't even get to what would be happening right now in South Florida if this was our team. Because Mike is poisoned and sickened and emotional and has been... Uh, people are bothered, I would say, by what they would identify as Mike's virtue signaling around this, uh, giving up his fandom because this appalls him so much. And Homer Greg Cody has been cheering Miami Dolphin teams for damn near 50 years. I wonder if any people in Miami listening to this change their opinions on anything we're saying because sports fandom will screw you up that way because you can be an idiot because hell we're talking about 20 years of excitement down here because 20 years of emptiness has been replaced by Tyreek Hill. Right. And he's got some of this in his past too. Tyreek does. When, when Kansas city signed Tyreek Hill, there was a big controversy over his domestic abuse uh, incident. And, uh, and the first touchdown pass, he was cheered like a hero. And, and so Deshaun Watson will be. And if he played for the Miami Dolphins, it would be the exact same situation. The PR folks for the Miami Dolphins would say, hey, guys, Deshaun's not taking any questions about any of this, just football. And, you know, you're still free to ask it, but then maybe you have your, your credential revoked. Dolphin, you, Dolphin fans, you got lucky. You got lucky. So did, what, 20 teams reached out to the Houston Texans trying to get this quarterback services? You got lucky. It was a traumatic experience for me as someone that deeply – deeply loved his Cleveland Browns fandom to go to walk away from this team. I saw yesterday as validation for that. I was refreshed that it wasn't my problem anymore. You can argue that I'm just as hypocritical for still supporting the league, but I'm telling you, I can't give up football. I love football too much. I can't do it, but you got lucky. You dodged it. You didn't have to ask yourself these deeply personal questions and reevaluate yourself the way that I did. And I'm happy for you. Be excited. Also Tyreek Hills in your huddle. Good luck with that. And it was dumb luck. Let's make that clear. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. It's that they got their way out of this situation by being totally incompetent. <laughs> Imagine McDaniel and Tua is the greatest thing to happen to this franchise. They bungled the uh, the Deshaun Watson thing, and they had Tom Brady and Sean Payton <laughs> right there. We're not for an unprecedented lawsuit from a former head coach. Also, what's happening with that lawsuit? <laughs> Keep your eye on the ball. Did you see Mostert's times at practice? My God. I know. My God, pal.